Hey, I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and I'm going to show you how to play Mandala Stones. This is a game for two to four players, plays in about 30 minutes, is designed by Philip Glovach and is published by Board and Dice. In Mandala Stones, you're going to be moving artists and picking stones to place on your player board, which can be scored in several ways on future turns. Score stones are placed on the Mandala board, and if a symbol with the right number of hands is covered, the game end triggers and the player with the most points is the winner. But first, why don't you pick at the like button, score a click on the subscribe button, and once you've covered enough hands to end this video, make sure you leave a comment and let me know what you think of this game. For setup, put the large main board in the middle of the table with the mandala board, the one with the swirly pattern, next to it. Put all 96 stones in the bag. Randomly draw and place 4 stones on each space on the main board, showing the pretty mandala pattern. Put the random large black artist pawn on each of the 4 square spaces on the board to create a diamond shape. Give each player a double sided reference card and a player board with a score marker placed on the mandala pattern space marking 0 points. Shuffle the 10 objective cards, deal 2 to each player face down and return the rest of the box. Now we'll talk about these more later when we get on to end game scoring, but just know each player can look at their own objective cards at any point they like. Choose a random start player and make a note of who that player is because it's important. On a player's turn they can take one of two actions, pick or score. To pick, move any artist to any of the other five empty artist spaces marked with a circle on the board. Take the top stone of adjacent stacks to that artist, but only those that match the pattern on the top of the artist and not those adjacent to any other artist. For example, they moved an artist to this space here. From this position, they could take both the purple stones as they match the pattern on the artist. They can't take the red stone because the pattern does not match, and they can't take the yellow stone because even though the pattern does match, it is adjacent to another artist. And on a player's turn, they must move the artist to a place where at least one stone can be picked. When picking stones, choose a starting stone, then take all stones you can legally take in clockwise order. This will create a stack with the starting stone you picked first on the bottom. Place the stack on any empty space on your player board in the order they were picked up. And that's picking and that will end your turn. Your other option is to score. Now if you can't move the artist to a space on the board where you can legally pick or all your player board spaces are full so you can't place any more stones after picking, then you must score. And when scoring you have two more options. You can either score the top stones or stones of any colour. When scoring the top stones, simply select any stones from the top of any number of towers on your player board and score one victory point for each. Place these stones in the centre of the mandala board and go outwards, with players adding future scored stones to the end of this spiral. For each plus one and plus two covered, gain that many extra points. If you cover a symbol showing the number of hands equal to the number of players, the game end triggers, but more on that later. If you choose to score by colour, choose all towers on your board if the top stones share a colour on at least two of those towers. For example, here I could select red, but not yellow or blue. Score those towers on the board from left to right using the adjacent scoring method for that tower. The left tower scores for height variation. Score one victory point for each tower of a different height among all towers on your player board, including zero. For example, here I have two towers three high and one one high. That gives me three points for having three different tower heights, zero, one and three. The middle three towers score for their height and only refers to the height of the tower on that space. These towers score varying points depending on their height. For example, on this space, your tower is worth one point if it's four stones high, but four points if it's one stone high. Note that although these three towers score in a similar way, one favours short towers, one tall tower, and the other one is worth more if the tower is two or three stones high. The fifth scoring space scores for different colour stones for that tower in that space, plus one point. For example, this tower has two different colours, so is worth three points. Place the top stone of each of the scored towers in the centre of the mandala board and gain bonus points using the rules described earlier. After a player has either picked or scored, play continues clockwise. The game ends at the end of a round when a hand symbol is covered equal to the player count, so three hands for a three player game. Play until the final player in turn order so that everybody's played even turns. The game also ends immediately on a player's turn if they are unable to legally pick a stone by moving an artist and they have no stones on their player board to score. Then, in turn order, players reveal and score one objective card. A player could score either of their assigned objectives, but not both. The 10 objective cards can be split into three different categories. These four award 6 to 10 points if the player finishes with exactly the number of stones specified on their player board. These two award 7 points if the top stone on all towers on their player board at the end of the game show the specified pattern. The final four award 7 victory points if they end the game with at least 3 stones of the specific colour on their player board or have more stones of that colour on their player board than any other player. And the player with the most points wins with ties broken by the player earlier in turn order. And that's Mandala Stones.
Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when a video goes live. You can follow me on Twitter, Insta, Twitch, and YouTube at Jester the Rogue, and finally find the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob, aka Jester the Rogue, and I'll see you soon.